Hey there, friend, and welcome back. I'm so happy to have you here with me today. I am really, really excited to hop on here and talk to you because holy crap, there's been so much going on with me energetically, and I'm going to do my best to explain what it is that's been happening. It's been like all of these different like awareness truth bombs, I guess you could say, that have just been like exploding in my life. And it's so funny because there are moments where I feel like utter crap and like I just want to give up and be done. And then there's other parts where I can see like a little bit of a glimmering hope start to shine through and I keep reaching for it. And I'm like, I'm so close to it and I'm allowing it to be there. And while not trying to go for an end result and have this feeling of when I get there, I'll be happy, but instead just trying to remain present. And really just feeling everything that is coming up. I know that was a very like convoluted way to say things have just been all over the place lately, but I'm here to talk about it and I'm so excited to share what's been going on with you. So I have had this idea since I want to say last Sunday with Kyle Cease's oneness call. He has them every Sunday and then he's got evolving out loud on Wednesdays. His platform has been such like a pivotal monumental thing for my growth. I just resonate so much with what it is that he's been saying. And he was talking a lot about anger. And he also has a, a tendency to talk a lot about being an empath. And I'm someone who's very empathic and not in the sense of, oh, I'm very empathic, but in the sense of I am very empathic. And sometimes it's more so a curse than a superpower, but we're learning to let it be a superpower. And with my form of empathy, I have always put the other person's feelings before mine and I'm learning why I have been doing this. And the only reason why knowing why it's important for me is so that I can think something differently. Anytime that I go into a deep exploration or really just wanting to hear an emotion, it's not because I want to know per se, just for the sake of knowing. I don't care about that. I want to know so I can stop making the same choice and start doing something different for a different outcome. Because for the past year and a half, I've been waking up every single morning with just an instantaneous feeling. That was a good snap. Instantaneous feeling of just feeling like utter shit and trying to either change it or waiting for something outside of myself to change it, even though I know better than that. And I know that nothing is going to change unless I do. But there have been so many points where I've been like, but it's not me. It can't be me. And it's not that it was not me because it was me. It was that I was not aware of what was stopping me within myself. So when I have a different way of looking at things, which is why I listen to a whole bunch of different speakers and people and, and such, and I try so many different things to see what resonates, is because for me in the way that I am wired, I need to see things from different perspectives because things get really stale really quickly. And then I tend to jumble it and then I don't hear the message. I just hear words and it doesn't like process and click in my brain to a point where I can accurately and succinctly say what it is that I've learned. I just repeat back words that have absolutely no meaning or no like grit to them. So I'm learning how to have this grit. And one of the greatest things that Kyle Sees talks about is empaths. And he gave an example, I think it was either Wednesday's call or last Sunday's call, I don't remember, but he was talking about how we always put the other person's emotion before ours, or we really take into consideration the other person's emotions. And I had this realization of how much I do that and how much I sacrifice myself. And I looked through the lower parts, my last three chakras, to see where that happens and what feelings with what situations where I haven't been able to process an emotion fully to process a situation fully because I'm the kind of person where I'll see both sides and because I'm in control of myself I'll be like oh well I'm in the wrong because I didn't keep myself in check because I got angry because you said something really mean about me but yet I deserve it instead of being like well why did you say this or having an angry reaction like we have emotions for reasons. We're allowed to feel all these feelings. And it gave me so much freedom because I stopped sucking down my emotions and what it was I was feeling. And I've been able to put in a lot of really big boundaries while having constructive conversations, lots of 
great constructive conversations, like better than I've ever had before, because I took the time to get to know who I am, to have the tools to empower myself and also learn what tools I'm missing, not needing to go from zero to a thousand because I don't know how to regulate myself or have simple conversations of like, hey, that made me not feel very good. Like, can we talk about it? Life changing. And instead of being like, ooh, I can see why they felt this way, instead really hearing myself and being like, but I feel this way. I'm allowed to feel this way. I'm entitled to feel this way. And I know it sounds simple, but that's been so like life changing for me. Advocating for myself, putting myself first, not in an egoic way. Please hear this correctly. Please hear this with an open mind. It has not been a me, 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 but it's been a self love taking care of myself because once I'm able to, or as I'm able to take care of myself, I'm able to make different choices. I've been showing up so much differently in so many people's lives, really letting go of resistance and letting go of old thoughts, being able to see and catch them and make different decisions. A lot of what Dr. Joe Dispenza talks a lot about. I was listening to a great interview while working out because that's what I do. I listen to quantum physics or Rick Rubin talk as I'm, you know, working out with Chloe Tang. Um, my body's doing really good, by the way, with that. Love Chloe Tang. He was talking about his creative process. Like he, Rick Rubin is just such a giant in the music world when it comes to producing music. He's just so great. His book, The Creative Act, I'm staring at you right there, buddy. Such a great book. He is just such an influential person. He meditates every single day. He started off with transcendental meditation when he was 14, which is unreal. The ideas that this guy gets. And he said that when he's in the studio, how he gets all of these like great sounds that come out of all of these musicians is everything is on the table and he tries everything. And it's funny because when I heard that interview and I heard him say that, I've been doing something similar in my life. I don't know if you've ever done this, friend, where like you've had you've written like a paper and you've had these different points and you were willing to budge on everything except for one point. You're like, this thing has to say or like if you made up like a portfolio with pictures, you're like, this one picture has to stay. I don't care when any, anything else gets shifted around. I was the same way with like some ideas and some like ways of being. I was like, everything in my life can change except for this one thing which is very not in the unknown of me to say, <laughs> very controlling of me to say. And I have since stopped doing that and stopped thinking like that. I became aware that I was doing that. I became aware of what thoughts, what feelings, what actions I was holding fast on and not willing to change. And instead, I've started to just interchange everything to create different ideas, to have different outcomes, because the stuff that I've been able to see through how I've controlled stuff isn't making me feel the best. And I want new experiences. I feel like I'm living the same life over and over again. Even though I'm having a great time with it, I really would like some new information, some some new synaptic connections to get wired within this gray matter noggin of mine. <laughs> so I am learning that when something happens and I have a reaction, my ego, this pattern pops up and I want to react the same way because I'm feeling hurt or I'm feeling whatever. Instead, I'm choosing to observe it and becoming more and more aware of being in more of like a neutral state without judgment and not judging things compared to having to replay old programs over and over again. And I'm not trying to sound contradictory here with ignoring my feelings, feeling my feelings, and not reacting to them. I'm still allowing things to come up. Like yesterday, I felt really, really sad. I just had this big wave of emotion come through and instead of suppressing it, I sat on my living room floor in full surrender and I started to cry and my dogs were amazing and they came up and my dog Charlie's way of of giving me a hug is he puts his butt to me and he's like mom give me butt scratches and literally he was like lying in front of me and then he came and he like itched his butt and they made me feel better and then I was able to get through it and instead of like trying to find a fix you know ocu occupying myself by picking up a book and reading for the sake of not feeling this feeling or going and playing a video game to distract myself or sitting on the computer looking for jobs to find money. And I'm like, no, we're I'm feeling sad. We are going to feel sad. It's OK to feel sad. I allowed sad to be there. I allowed it to come up and I, I looked deeper within myself and I said, is there any other emotions that need to express themselves? Like, please, if you're ready, not forcing anything. And once it was kind of complete, I was like, all right, 
let's kind of move on through our day. I was able to observe it, see it, and I'm feeling so much better today. I had a great meditation last night. Um, before I jump into that, I have been picking up Becoming Supernatural again, and I was hanging out in my bathtub reading it. And in chapter one, I was reading about Dr. Joe's experiences in like the very beginning when he was experimenting with all of this. And he was talking about how he had become so aware and like he had this experience where all of his height, his senses were heightened and everything he saw, touched, felt, smelled, tasted and heard was amplified. And he was so elevated that he was aware and paying attention to everything around him, wanting to experience everything completely. And I have been doing similar things, except it's been in like a toxic way. Where if I feel like a sensation, like fluttery sensation in my body, I immediately start reacting. I've talked a lot about my anxiety lately and really just seeing more like into this feeling, like asking it, why are you here? What do I need to do to help you? Like what emotion are you? What pattern are you? How do we work on overcoming this or like seeing it so that way then it can be transmuted, not needing to do anything, but just allowing it to kind of fizzle out and dissolve. Because, you know, I, I do all the things and meditate every single day. I'm on the meds. <laughs> I do all these different modalities to work with it. And then I get so stuck in my thoughts and in my head and I become hyper aware of it that it starts to spiral me out of it. And it's really funny how I've been doing this work for a long time. I've been to three um, retreats myself. Not like that. That's anything. I just I have been in the work for a while. I've seen how it changes. I see how it changes lives for the good. And for the chaotic, because <laughs> I don't want to say it's bad because it's not because I had a year where like everything was fantastic. I had the money. I had the girl. I had the body. I, everything was awesome. And then everything just imploded because I had to become someone else. And I love the person that I've turned into. She's just ugh, she's such a badass. I'm so excited to watch myself evolve even more. But I picked this up. I actually listened to the audio version of Becoming Supernatural many years ago, the whole thing all the way through. And then I decided to pick it up and physically read it. And after being in the work for three years, three, four years, um, and really diving deep into this, everything just makes so much more sense on a different level because I've experienced a lot of what he talks about. And it's filling in a lot of the, the gaps and the holes that I've had in my foundation. So if you're struggling a little bit, go back to the material and reread and see if you can have a different experience when you read it. But one of the best things about this that I had read um, the other day was he was talking about how he had evolved beyond chemical emotions. And when I have these panic attacks, it's a chemical emotion because I've changed so much that, you know, I'm not I'm not giving my body the chemical hits of addiction when it comes to eating food. I've changed up my diet so much really pushing myself when I want to like exercising to get myself to a better place, making myself more and more uncomfortable. And if I have an offended reaction to someone, especially if they're close to me, not being addicted to how I feel when I get offended because I get so addicted at the victim as much as I don't like myself when I become a victim. There are so many times where I play the victim and I don't want to. I, I don't want to. But my body is addicted to that chemical. I don't know what chemical it is, but it needs to stop. <laughs> but this part here, I'm going to just briefly summarize it because I don't want to get anything with copyright because I don't think I'm supposed to reproduce it or whatever. But he had evolved beyond the chemical reactions and he felt this love, which was an evolved love. It was not chemical, but electric. And it wasn't a high love. It wasn't an egoic love, but it was an incredible form of joy. I've had that feeling before. I, I call them love attacks. I love those love attacks so much. And this is the part that really got me, that got me thinking a lot and that stuck with me, which you'd think out of, I read up to two chapters last night, you'd think like about the present moment and potentials, like that would be what stuck with me. But this is what stuck with me that really like rang a bell in my head. Finally, he was walking around in his backyard in the middle of winter with no shoes and no jacket. And yet he was so aware of the feeling of the cold that it was intensely enjoyable. He didn't have an opinion about how ice cold the ground under his feet was. He just loved having his feet touching the frozen grass on the earth, and he felt very connected to both the feeling and the grass. 
He understood that if he entertained the typical thoughts and judgments that he normally would have perceived about being cold, it would cause him to create a sense of polarity, dividing the energy that he was experiencing. If he judged it, he would lose the feeling of wholeness. The amazing feeling of energy that he was experiencing inside his body was so much greater than the condition and the surrounding environment, the cold. And as a result, he effortlessly embraced the cold with Zell. And it was simply life. And in fact, it was so pleasurable that he didn't want the moment to end and he wanted it to last forever. So when I'm going through these panic attacks, not judging it, knowing that it's just intense energy moving through the body, it's just this 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 wave of emotion surrendering more and more into it. Thinking about the fire walkers, the people who walk across the hot coals and how they don't get burnt, it's because they're not letting the conditions of life take over. They're not letting their judgments or, or programs take over. And applying what he said in that example, which I'm so thankful to have, letting that be an example for anything. If something rubs me the wrong way and I'm feeling like, oh my gosh, like so thrown off and I'm like throwing a pattern or a reaction, hearing it, seeing if it's something that needs to come up and out. And then if not, just not judging it and just being like, okay, that's interesting. And just letting it be the panic attacks, not giving into the anxiety as my heart's thumping out of its chest because I'm afraid to drive over a stupid bridge all of a sudden. It just is surrendering into it, just surrendering into it, allowing it just to take over. I had an experience yesterday in a meditation where I was just so done with the anxiety and the panic attacks that I was having. And I did this really cool. It's a different variation of tuning into new potentials. It was like an hour and 25 minutes and it was amazing. And as I was sitting there and I was drawing this new potential to me, this new this new me becoming somebody else, not being in this body but being in a body that does not remember what anxiety feels like, that has no idea what a panic attack feels like and just feels nothing but just relaxation and even in the most intense moment can relax into it and then handle it with ease because it has such an expanded mind and consciousness and it can handle anything that gets thrown its way because that is anything is possible. That that potential is possible for me. And when I've done these tuning into new potential meditations, I have had such a hard time or any visualization. I've always had such a hard time with feeling as if it's already happened. I just, I don't want to say I can't do it because I know that I can. I just get so confused as to what it feels like. But for some reason this time, I connected with it and I must have wanted it that badly that I felt it kind of like on like a loading dock, so to speak, on the outside of me. It was like on the outside of my energy. And I just felt as it just kept moving and moving because it's just a frequency. I was tuning into that frequency and I brought that frequency closer and closer and closer and closer. And I felt it like merge right into me. And I've heard people talk about this all the time. And I'm just like, oh, gee, lucky for you. You can have that experience. Why can't I? <laughs> and I felt like it was finally my time to feel that. And I just felt just this this great just energy. And it was it wasn't bombastic. It wasn't euphoric. It wasn't high. It was just, it was expansive. And I felt myself just, just getting more and more expanded. And I know when I'm feeling more and more expanded, I'm connected into something. And then as per usual, that's been happening with these hour and 25 minute meditations for the last 25 minutes, I was out. Oh my God, I was out. Scared the crap out of me when I came back because it jumped to the middle of the meditation and there were like these weird noises coming through and my heart was just like beating out of its chest. So funny. But I had one of the greatest night's sleep. Uh, that I've had for a long time, which has been really difficult for me because sleeping, I've been scaring myself sleeping because when I shut my eyes and I'm quiet, that's when all of these thoughts and all of this anxiety takes over. I have to keep distracting myself. So when I'm with myself, that's when I'm with the anxiety. Then I overcame that, allowed it to be there, but I was able to overcome it without doing anything. I just shut my eyes and I just became someone else. I had different feelings energies emotions it was great anyway i woke up this morning and i kept saying to myself just go slow go slow your judgments your patterns your conditioning everything your your life that you remember that hasn't been turned on yet you haven't remembered yourself yet just enjoy this feeling enjoy the nothing and just relax and remember what this feels like and i just kept telling like automatically like this wasn't i wasn't even thinking it this is just something that kept happening over and over again i might just just breathe just breathe and relax. Just breathe and relax. Just breathe and relax. And I kept saying that over and over again. And I had a great morning slowly waking up and I allowed that feeling to carry on for the rest of my day. And it's been feeling really great. I've been feeling really expansive. 
And I'm really excited to keep digging into more of Becoming Supernatural, more of Kyle's stuff. He had a great oneness meditation um, about an hour ago. Really great stuff. Just sitting with whatever was there, not trying to fix anything, just observing, not attaching a story to anything. Another thing I've been doing a lot too, something happens and I, I want to feel offended because somebody wants to start talking to other people and making new friends, not being like, oh, well, it's because I'm not good enough because that's a story that I tell myself all the time. Just being like, oh, that's interesting. I'm not creating a story around it. And then just really taking if I have some kind of energy, allowing it to be there, being like, yes, you can feel this way, but let's turn that into something constructive. If you feel so inadequate about yourself, why don't we go for a walk? Why don't we go not not trying to numb it? but instead using that energy in a productive way. Let's go work out. You know, you didn't work out today. Let's go work out. Let's go move. Let's go do something that feels a little bit better besides really just being in that lamenting, pitiful state. Again, allowing it to be there. Not trying to force it or change it. Not numbing it. But instead allowing it to empower me. So I hope all of that made sense. I've been so excited to talk about all of this stuff because while... I feel like I'm literally falling backwards. I also feel like I've just been catapulted into like 50 different lifetimes within the past like three days. Like I got invited to a game night on Friday night and I had like 10 panic attacks driving to the place and then like another like 50 panic attacks while I was at my friend's house. And I'm like, this is ridiculous, but we're going to keep overcoming it because I am an infinite creator who is creating their life and who is here to serve the planet and help uplift the consciousness. And I am a magical being and I'm your magical friend and excited to be here. So friend, thank you so much for being here with me. You have no idea how much it means to me. If you got something out of this and you wish to give back to this channel and or buy Abigail, my horse, a bale of hay, head on over to ko-fi.com slash hey there friend. I'm thinking about selling my poor paintings again on Etsy just because I have a lot of them and they need to go. <laughs> so be on the lookout for that. And I'm just looking into trying out new things, seeing what floats my boat and excites me and expands me. So friend, thank you so much for being here along this ride. Empower yourself, get to know who the heck you are, observe your thoughts, don't attach stories to them, love yourself no matter what, in all of the darkness, the light, every part of you, it's all a part of you, love every aspect of you. It's so important. No matter what, just promise me you'll keep singing. Okay, friend? Mm -hmm.